Hey class, um, so here's another example problem. This is one I actually used on the first exam a couple of years ago, and it really gave students a hard time. In fact, uh, just on my juniors abroad trip, I heard a student complaining about the penguin problem, as he calls it. So um, in case you can't tell from my beautiful drawings, these are supposed to be pictures of a penguin at two different points in time. We have this penguin who's sliding down a slope of 6.84 degrees, at a constant speed of 3.89 meters per second. So here in position one, he's sliding down a slope at a constant speed. Then at some point later here, he hits a horizontal patch of ice. All right, so now at point two, he's reached the bottom and he's on a horizontal patch of ice. And then eventually at some later point in time, we'll call it point three. I forgot to draw him over here. Okay, anyway, here he is, yay, beautiful penguin. All right, um, at point three in time, he's come to rest. Oh boy, howdy, that's supposed to be his beak, but it now it just looks like a blob. Um, let's try that again, okay. Good thing I pay uh, a lot of attention to these wonderful drawings here. All right, so anyway, point three, he's come to rest. So the question then we're asked to determine is, assuming that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the penguin and the ice is the same at all points, both horizontal and on the incline, how much time is required for the penguin to come to a halt? All right, so you start with this problem, and my guess is as you read it, well, actually, my guess, I want you to pause it. I want you to take a minute and try to think about trying to solve this on your own. Pause the video, try it yourself, okay? And you're welcome to unpause, listen a little bit, pause again, and continue. But I'm going to dive right in. So you read this problem, and you're like, wait a second. You're asking me to figure out the amount of time it takes for this guy to slide to a stop so that we're asked to determine, basically, what is the time from here, point two, over here to point three. What is that time? We don't, we're not even told the distance there. We're not even told the mass of this penguin. All we're told is the speed he has on the horizontal or on the incline and the angle of the incline and that the coefficient is constant. So my guess is when you first start this problem, you have no clue how to go about solving it. And in fact, the first time I tackled it, I didn't know how to start either. I just trusted the process, jumped in and went from there. It's a pretty good one though. So let's go ahead and do that. We want to try to figure out what's going on here, and we're trying to find this time somehow, and we're going to need to try to trust the process and see what happens. So if we want to find the time shown here, time makes me immediately think not of forces, but of kinematics, because in the forces, we haven't really done much with time. So if I start to think about that, here I have some initial velocity in the x direction, and guess what that initial velocity is? Well, if on the slope we had a constant 3.89 meters per second, then our initial velocity here at point two, let's actually, instead of calling it initial, let's call it the velocity at point two. So the velocity at point two should be equal to 3.89 meters per second. And while we're making sure we uh, keep track of our variables, let's go ahead and label the velocity at point one as well. Maybe we won't call it the velocity in the x direction since it's at an angle, but, oops, sorry. Let's just call it velocity one. And that's gonna be equal to 3.89 meters per second also. So it's constant during that time. And we know that the velocity here at point three is gonna be zero. Okay, so hmm, that immediately makes me think of an equation of motion. Oh wait, uh, let's see, acceleration, if we're labeling our variables, we don't know, hmm, that's a bummer. Because immediately when I started solving this, it made me think of an equation of motion, that the velocity at point three in the x direction is gonna be equal to the velocity at point two plus acceleration times time. And we know the velocity is at point two and three, we know this is zero. So we can say zero equals the velocity at point two plus acceleration times time. So solving our time is just gonna be equal to our velocity, negative velocity at point two over the acceleration. Oh, nice, are we done? Oh, wait, no, we don't know the acceleration, bummer. If we can figure out what that acceleration is, this is in the x direction on the horizontal. If we can figure out what that acceleration is, 
then we should be able to solve. Oh, bonus, okay. So if we wanna find that acceleration, now I'm thinking acceleration, sum of the forces, yeah, sounds good. So let's look at some of the forces from point two to point three. So I wanna to try to stay organized on this problem because it's kind of confusing. So we could consider from point one to point two, which is really the incline. Or we can consider the horizontal which is points uh, two to point three, okay? So everything we've done so far is, is dealing with the horizontal, right? So the horizontal is everything up here. And so if we're looking at the horizontal, let's start with a free body diagram. So the free body diagram for the horizontal, what does it look like? Well, we have the penguin, which has a weight going down. It has a normal force going up, and we're told that there's kinetic friction, right? And that's it. Well, that's easy enough. So if we do some of the forces in the x direction, that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. And guess what? This acceleration here in the sum of the forces is the same as this acceleration because it's the acceleration from point 0.2 to point 0.3. Oh, that's a nice bonus. All right, maybe I'll put the subscript x there so we know which one we're talking about. So sum of the forces in the x equals ma. In the x direction, all we have is negative force of kinetic friction, and that's gonna be equal to ma. Kinetic friction, remember, is normal force multiplied by the coefficient of kinetic friction equals ma. So the question is, uh, let's see, what is the normal force? Well, if we do some of the forces in the y direction, those are gonna be equal to zero since we're on a flat horizontal surface. All right, so some of the forces in the y direction, we just have normal going up, weight, mg going down, and that equals zero. So our normal force is just equal to mg. You might have been able to figure that one out on your own. So we can substitute that in. Oh boy, howdy, this is getting crazy. So we have normal force, mg, times the coefficient, mu k, equals ma. Our masses cancel, oh nice. So the fact that we don't know the mass of the penguin isn't needed. And what we're left with is our acceleration is equal to negative g times the coefficient of kinetic friction. That's it, oh, that's beautiful. So can we plug this in up here and solve for time, see you later? Well, shoot, not quite, right? Because we don't yet know what that coefficient of friction is. So if we wanna solve, we need to figure out the coefficient of friction first, oh, bummer. But we're making progress, we're working through this, all right? So now, if we can find what that coefficient of kinetic friction is, we can solve. And what part of the information given on the problem have we not used? Well, we haven't done anything to do with the incline yet. So let's now evaluate what's going on on the incline and see if maybe that can help us figure it out. All right, so I'm gonna just shift things over a little bit here and we can focus on the incline. So in focusing on the incline, Let's start with a free body diagram. So for our free body diagram here, we're gonna have the weight, mg, straight down. We're gonna have the normal force perpendicular to the ramp and friction up the ramp, all right? So now we need to define axes here all right, so one option that people like to use is defining axes horizontal and uh, vertical. But in this case, I'm going to do perpendicular and parallel to the ramp. So if we call this the x direction, we can call this the y direction. All right, that's what I'm going to use as my axes. But if I do so, I now see that my weight force is at an angle. So the angle made by the weight force here well, that's the same angle as the ramp, as we've seen in other example problems. So let's go ahead and break our weight force down into x and y components. So the x component of the weight is going to be mg times the sine of the angle theta. Again, if I make a little triangle here, the x component, the part down the ramp, is the opposite side. The part into the ramp is the adjacent side. So wy is gonna be equal to negative, because it's down, mg cosine theta. All right, 
So we got that. Now we can do some of our forces. And here's a bonus. Again, this is a part that's easy to miss. We're sliding down at a constant velocity. So even though the penguin's moving, guess what? Net force still is going to be zero. So some of the forces in the x direction will be zero for the penguin, and the sum of the forces in the y direction are going to be equal to zero. So if we do the x direction first, what we have is wx minus the force of kinetic friction equals zero. So wx is just equal to the force of kinetic friction. So let's substitute in for those. wx is mg sine theta, and the force of kinetic friction is force normal multiplied by the coefficient. Well, we're running out of room, so let's slide down a little more. So, bonus, but let's see, we still, we don't know m, and we don't know the normal yet. Huh, so if we want to solve for mu, then we need to do some more substitution. So let's go ahead and do some of the forces in the y. So in the y direction, you have the normal force in the positive y direction minus mg cosine theta in the negative direction equals zero. So look at that. Our normal force is just going to be equal to mg times the cosine of the angle. So we can substitute this in. Oh, I just noticed I'm switching uh, between capital and lowercase here. So let's fix this. Just to keep it consistent, let's leave this lowercase here. All right, so we can substitute this in over here, bonus. So we have mg sine theta equals the normal force, which is mg cosine theta. And we still have that multiplied by the coefficient. So notice, look at this, boom, mg's cancel out. Oh boy, howdy, that's easy. Divide by cosine, and guess what we get? Sine theta over cosine theta equals the coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction, sine over cosine is just tangent, right? So the coefficient is just equal to the tangent of the angle theta. So it's just equal to the tangent of our angle, which is, uh, let's see, what was our angle again? 6.84, the tangent of 6.84 degrees. So if you plug that in, calculate the tangent of 6.84, I believe it comes out to be equal to approximately 0 0.120. It has no units because it's a coefficient, and so boom, we're good. And now look at that, boy howdy. We can plug that in over here for our acceleration, and if we slide around, we know that our time is just going to be equal to our negative velocity over our acceleration. Oh wow, boy howdy. So if we want to solve, I'm going to here, let's just slide over a little bit more. So if we want to solve for time, it's just going to be equal to negative velocity, which we know our starting velocity was 3.89 meters per second, divided by our acceleration, which is negative g, 9.8 meters per second squared, times mu, which we just found to be 0 0.12, and so we plug and chug, the negatives cancel, so that's a bonus, and we should find that the time it takes for the penguin to stop is about 3.31 seconds. Oh boy howdy, now that, my friends, is a problem. Not an easy one, very much a tricky problem, but a really good example of how we can use different ideas together. And again, keep in mind, in physics, very often you're not going to know the path ahead of time, you must start working through. You notice we got stopped multiple times along the way. We started out trying to solve for time, got stuck because we didn't know acceleration. We tried to solve for acceleration, got stuck because we didn't know the coefficient of friction. Tried to solve for the coefficient, got stuck because we didn't have normal force. And after making all those substitutions, we could then find the coefficient, find the acceleration, and find the time. So, hope that helps, and yeah, have yourselves a box-worthy day.